On October the 4th, 1957, the first satellite, Sputnik 1, was launched into space. Although it burned up in the atmosphere three months later, many satellites launched since then have not, leaving us with a virtual junkyard orbiting the Earth. Now those debris represent a real threat to the television, communications and GPS satellites, not to mention the astronauts. But luckily, the Swiss have a plan to clean up space. So I've come to Lausanne to figure out how they're going to do it. Most of the space junk orbiting Earth is within 2,000 kilometers of the Earth's surface. There are over 22,000 objects larger than this softball and over half a million larger than this marble. Now, all of the orbiting debris is going about seven to eight kilometers per second. But since the objects are moving relative to one another, the average speed of a collision is about 10 kilometers per second. And an object this size, going 10 kilometers per second, has about the same impact as a mid-sized car going nearly 200 kilometers per hour. That's enough force to destroy any satellite in orbit. As a veteran of four space flights, Swiss astronaut Claude Nicolier knows the dangers firsthand. All of the large debris are tracked uh, by radar. We know the uh, orbit exactly, and sometimes we had to do the small change in the orbital characteristics of our spaceship, the space shuttle, space shuttle Endeavour, because it was foreseen that that next day or two days later we're going to have a close uh, approach with the uh, with the debris, such that. Uh, NASA was not feeling too good about that, and we changed a little bit our orbit so as to make that distance a little bit larger. Fortunately, to date, there haven't been any serious collisions with manned spacecraft. But in 2009, a single crash between two satellites added a whopping 2,000 new pieces of debris. If we don't do anything, space will become soon inaccessible because of the uh, large amount of debris and the high risk of collision. So the Swiss, determined to do something about the problem, are extending their clean country reputation into outer space. The Swiss Space Center has launched a, a program called Clean Space One that is a demonstrator of a capability to remove debris. And the idea is to go and remove uh, one of two satellites uh, from Switzerland. One of these two satellites is appropriately named SwissCube. SwissCube is a small satellite which you see, uh, this is a one-to-one -one model. So this is the, in the right scale. It belongs to Switzerland. So we had to do something about this. You can't have Swiss junk just no. floating around in space. No, that's not acceptable. So the mission for Clean Space One is a proof of concept, that a janitor satellite can be sent into space to grab a piece of space junk, in this case Swiss Cube, and bring it back into the atmosphere where it'll burn up. But to rendezvous with the space junk, the small janitor needs an incredibly efficient engine. Working on the challenge is Professor Herbert Shea, an expert in micromechanics. This is your propulsion this, this is our propulsion system. system. Little uh, silicon uh, micro-machine chips. We use something called electric propulsion, which allows you to emit single atoms with a, that are electrically charged, and you use an electric field to accelerate them out. So you're not burning them, you're emitting your propellant. And that's what many small satellites use, but nothing has been, to date, been able to make something this small. So we, we do zero to 60 miles an hour in about three days. <laughs> but laughable as it indeed seems to all of us, because there's no friction in space, or negligible friction, then if we wait six months, we have a huge change in speed. And that's how the mission will be done. Once propelled into the correct orbit, the next challenge is to grab the space junk, an object tumbling around uncontrollably without creating more debris. Our idea is to use a very compliant system. Can you think of an octopus arm? An octopus arm is very soft, but it can grab any strange shape and wrap around it and hold it. And we'll have a grabber that looks in a very, uh, the, the real one will be more sophisticated, but it looks like this. So it's basically very, very soft uh, elastomer. I'll turn it on in a minute. You can see how, how soft it is. And, and the idea is this will be rolled up, so it doesn't take much room. You get into, and we'll have 10 of these in a series. You get into space, you unroll it, and then these things can open when you turn the voltage on. You're able to open this, and you turn the voltage off, and it wraps around, and it holds the satellite. Is this going to be a little bit like those games where you're trying to pick up a stuffed toy in the arcade and drop it somewhere? <laughs> Is it going to be like that? Essentially, yes. Those games, those games can be incredibly frustrating. 
with those little arms. They're built to be frustrating. <laughs> Whereas this, this is built to be, this is built to succeed. Can I ask, uh, has anyone ever successfully gone up and grabbed a piece of space junk and gotten rid of it? To my knowledge, no. It's never been done before. Uh, and it grabs on. Ambitious as it may sound, the Swiss know how vast this junkyard is, so their ultimate aims are more modest. And hopefully, starting in, say, 2020, to do a systematic removal of the large debris at the rate of five or more per year in order to contain the increase of the uh, debris density in low Earth orbit. Then, space will continue becoming accessible. Of course, the exposure to the space environment is a wonderful thing. Welcome to Alaska. I'm just outside of Fairbanks, and I'm trying to find the Northern Lights, the Aurora Borealis. As the 